Shalom, dear friends. This is Eva the Glick once again from shalomjerusalem.org with another Temple Mount Torah study. And today we are studying Psalms chapter 6. Lamanatseach bin Ginot al Hashminit Mizmor le David. We're here reading a Psalm of David playing the music on the instrument called the Shminit. Adonai Alba Pchatuchicheni, the Alba Hamatchat Yesrin. Choneni Adonai, Kium Lalani, Rifaini Adonai, Kinivalu Atzamai. Hashem, O Lord, do not punish me in your anger, do not chess with me. In your wrath, favor me, O Lord, for I am broken. Heal me, O Lord, for my limbs are dismayed, and my soul is greatly dismayed. But you, O Lord, how long? Verses 2, 3, and 4. The petitioner in this psalm, which is quite uh, obviously a psalm which is not of thanksgiving, it's not a psalm of uh, complaint, it's a psalm of supplement, supplication. It's a psalm that he's pleading to God. Do not punish me in your anger. Do not chastise me in your wrath. Favor me because I am broken. My limbs are dismayed. He's talking to God in second person. He's saying to him, Hashem, Cure me because I'm totally in pieces. That is the reasoning given in verses 2, 3, and 4. He's begging God to listen to him and to hear his voice because of his suffering. Then he goes on in verses 5 and 6. And he gives a different reasoning for the need for God to listen to his voice. Turn to me, O Lord. Rescue my soul. Save me for the sake of your loving kindness. For in death there is no remembrance of you. In the underworld, who will give you thanks? Here we have two more verses. In these two verses, the reasoning is not the suffering of the petitioner. The reasoning is not because he is broken, not because his limbs are dismayed, but for your sake, God, God, for your sake, for your loving kindness, because you are, you don't want to do bad in this world. In the underworld, who will give you thanks if I, God forbid, die? Who's going to thank you? So as we see here, in the first six verses of this uh, supplication psalm, we see a person play, pleading to God to help him. We don't even know what is the reasoning, what is he suffering for. He does use the word rifaini in verse 3, heal me. But in the psalm, we know that healing doesn't have to doesn't have to specifically be a physical illness. It could be something deep in the heart. We can have David talking to God and begging to God, heal me, heal my soul. And we will see in a few seconds that there's a good reasoning to say that we're not talking about a a physical illness. But maybe we're talking about something else. But in these first six verses, we have a direct talk to God. God is mentioned from the very beginning. And he, even in the, in the final sentence as well, in the underworld, who will give you thanks? In the center of this part of the, the first half of this psalm, we have a cry out to God in verse 4. 
But you, O oh Lord, how long? He doesn't even say how long. Until when? He doesn't say until when what? Ad matai. Until when? It's quite obvious. Until when am I, am I going to continue being in this distress? Until when am I going to be suffering this plight? And the petitioner is talking directly to God. But it's not helping. And therefore, if he starts off complaining to God, understanding that God will have sympathy over him because of his suffering, it wasn't enough. And he breaks out in tears and says, until when? And then he says to God, maybe you'll try something else. And because of your goodwill, for your loving kindness, because I want to thank you for all the good. And this is not enough. And this is the first half of our psalms. For those of you who speak Hebrew, many of the Psalms and many of the chapters in the Bible are divided in exactly half. Here we have a situation where we have 39 words and 39 words. The first half are 39 words and the second half will become 39 words. And let's go on to the second half. The second half in verse 7. He's not talking to God anymore. God is not mentioned anymore. God is not the second person. He's talking to himself. He's describing a situation. He's probably talking to people who are listening to him. He's describing his suffering. He's describing his affliction. Now it's becoming strong and very strong. I have become weary with my sighing. Yagati be'anchati. Every night I make my bed swim. I'm swimming in my bed. I melt in my couch with my tears. The description here of him filled with tears. He's not even talking to God. He's talking to himself. Maybe we're in a, in a situation of somebody who gave up on God. Maybe we're in, in, a, in a situation of desperation. Somber desperation. That's probably the situation. Because what does he say? He says, My eye is dim because of grief. It has become old because of all my adversaries. He's mentioning not only his own personal suffering, but there are other people who are probably teasing him. There are others who are enjoying the fact that he is suffering. Description here of David talking to God and talking to him personally, begging to God, pleading to God, not helping. Tell, describing the, all of his suffering, it's not helping. Talking to God and trying to convince God because he wants because you're so good, it's not helping. And then finally he stops talking to God. He talks to himself. I'm, I'm swimming in tears in my bed. And we're in, 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 a, in a state of crying. A state of crying. Depart from me, all of you workers of iniquity. Iniquity. For the Lord has heard my voice of my weeping. What happened? Suddenly a tonal new voice. The Lord has heard my supplication. The Lord will accept my prayer. May all my enemies be frustrated and greatly dismayed. May they turn back. May they suddenly be frustrated. If in the first half, we saw that the first half was divided into two parts. The first half we had, the first the verses 2, 3, and 4, where he was calling out to God, and the end of first, verse 4 was, Oh Lord, how long? And then we have 5 and 6 where he's talking to God and saying, don't, don't heal me because of my need, but heal me because of your sake. In the second half of this psalm, the same thing happens. He's describing how the situation is terrible, how he's swimming in, in, in tears. And once again, he calls out, verse 9, Depart from me, all your workers of inquiry. Not talking to God, just crying. Total despair. But suddenly, when he's just an authentic cry, he's just authentically expressing his, his, his suffering, his pain, 
there at this time. Just the crying, the authentic cry is what brings the change. Suddenly, he hears God has heard his weeping. He hears not in the heart of God, God has heard his prayer. God heard his weeping. God has heard my supplication. Going back to the very beginning where God, he was praying to God and, 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 and begging God, and here we see God has heard his supplication. And God has heard, accepted his prayer. Once again, taking us back to the beginning. So he was praying to God. He was pouring out his tears. He was expressing his suffering. But none of that was close to when he stopped talking to God and just crying. Sometimes the authentic cry, releasing the stomach from swimming in the tears, this is what causes the change. And from here he calls out, depart from me all your workers of iniquity. The Lord has heard my voice of my weeping. The Lord has heard my supplication. The word accepted, my Lord accepted my prayers. And yes, this is a very strong psalm where in the prayer book we read it every single day after the main prayer because it really expresses that after you're standing in front of God and requesting all your prayers, you humbly put your head down and you talk to yourself. And there in the authentic cry of suffering, I think this psalm should be an eye-opener for us also. There are people who are suffering, inner suffering. The psalmist here does not tell us what the, what the uh, characteristic of this, of this uh, suffering is because he wants many people to identify it, identify with it. But it's for us to know that there are people who are suffering in their beds, even if they're not in any, any, in any illness, People who are suffering alone. And we have to be aware and listen to them. And try to give them the feeling that God is with them. And God is giving and listening and giving them hope. We all should be praying to God with an authentic cry when we need it. Because God hears. And once you release an authentic God, you can feel and the reason of the they cry, you can feel that God is with you and God is hearing your prayer and your cry. Shalom from Jerusalem.